Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bono Podcast, and we've got a very cool Kickstarter preview for you today. We are going to be looking at Grebo Games' next venture, and we have got absolute tons of their miniatures to look at today. So this is going to be their next campaign, which is going to be live in a few days' time, maybe, maybe a week, at some point very, very soon. Now, it's one of their cuter moors ones, so they've got a range of miniatures which are like little cartoony frogs and bunny rabbits and things like that that kind of get like a, a really interesting mix of cutie stuff, really cutesy, with um, really violent and really disturbing. Now, it's a fantastic range. Uh, we've got a guy in our local club who's got a penguin team, and it's the Norse one, and it's just awesome. Really cool miniatures to paint and a really nice style as well. Tiff loves them. She's been talking about getting a Cutimals team for ages. I'm thinking this could be a great way to get her to play Bub Bowl. Now we're going to be looking at their new one, which is incredibly monkey themed. But it is not just one team. It is a gorgeous mix of like so many different models. What we're going to have a look is we're going to have a look at some of the models, some of the sizes, some of the quality, and then kind of put together some example teams that you can build using those different miniatures. I was over the moon when I saw them. Uh, I was not expecting this style and I think they're awesome. They're very awesome. So let's have a look. So we're going to start with the infantry first. So we're going to come to the big boys later, the machines, the secret weapons, the ridiculous stuff. And we'll first of all have a look at some of the monkey soldiers in this Kickstarter. So let's pop it open. We've got one tray of monkey dudes and we've got another tray full of little monkey dudes as well which is very very cool so we will start with the lemurs i think which are these guys here so uh when the kickstarter goes live you'll be able to look at all the different sculpts but we cannot not have a look at some of these um because they are so cute this is the cutimals team right but look at these models look at the little sleeping dudes there's one there which i really like who's like trying to scare people with his little scary face it looks like a little tiny furry baby yoda um <laughs> these models are just amazing i showed tiff when these landed and she was just like these are so lovely so we've got here we've got the monkeys um i'm not sure what they're going to be called when the kickstarter goes live now these come in various different positions that we'll have a look at in a second but these guys can be basically a normal team we've got the lemurs here which are these little adorable guys who are actually genuinely like incredibly adorable look at it look at him look at him very scary um, and they are kind of your snotlings and noblars these guys however because they come in such great positionals and with such great character i mean look at this guy like look at the detail first of all look at the character that's why these are so good that's why these minis are so good is because you get so much character and uh, you've got more little lemurs this guy's little fallen asleep there anyway we've got catchers we've got blitzers we've got kind of throwers with little monkey balls there and uh, you've got a very one of the most characterful miniatures where is he where is he where is he is one of the guys who is just showing off his rear end which i thought was pretty awesome then we've got a tray of goodies here as well so this is going to show off some of the other models now, it is a confusing batch when you look at all the different variety of, of individual pieces, but that is the most amazing thing about this team, is you have so much character, and a lot of the pieces are very multi-positional. So you've got the little uh, monkey guy here, you've got two of these little brawler guys, who can be um, your hefties in a halfling team, for example, because they are bigger than the monkeys, but not so big that they uh, are big guys essentially because you've got a pair of them here and there's two and these would make great hefties now don't get me wrong this is there's probably a simeon team in here somewhere uh, even though simeon are even more dead than like slan and stuff but we've got a ton of cool models uh what should we look at what should we look at we've got a cool coach here as well which i'm a big fan of look at the character in this guy can we get the camera to focus come on camera there we go look at that look at the detail look at the character we've got monkeys we've got a little dude on his shoulder uh, it's just so much fun. Next up, we've got some bigger guys. Not sure if these guys are big guy big guys or just bigger guys. So what we've got here are a bunch of gorilla positionals. Oh man, look at that. Just look at it. Okay, I'm uh, going to say it again probably for the thousandth time, so I do apologise. But the Grebo miniatures quality these days is 
unmatched completely unmatched i think the gree blood thing they're doing which is kind of like 3d printing esque is amazing the quality you can tell is so crisp like it's just fantastic now size wise these guys can be ogres uh they can be your trolls they can be your black orcs okay so got a bit of a size comparison pop a black orc down pop a dude down you can see that mass wise this guy a bit bigger than a black orc um, so it could be used to represent a black orc and this is something you can definitely do with this team and I really like the idea of using these guys as black orcs and some of the monkey guys as uh, your little dudes okay that would work brilliantly you got the same position as these guys would also work well as ogres and size wise as you can tell let's put it base to base they got some serious mass on them but it wouldn't be ridiculous for them to be strength four so these gorillas are just awesome we've got a couple more you can see that They've got that cartoony aspect that matches the team. They've got that kind of Grebo MMO-esque element to it as well. Like, these wouldn't look out of place on a Clash of Clans advert kind of style. And it's awesome. And size-wise, they are superb. Like I said, they marry up really well with the Black Orc. And they're a bit bigger, so you could use them as ogres and things like that too. But wait, there's more. So we've got a couple of very cool star player-ish players now so where you're running an ogre team you've got those gorillas that could be your ogres this guy would make a fantastic run punter if you're using any other kind of team this guy would make a fantastic star player now size wise again a bit chunkier than a black orc which is kind of where you want to be for those strength four to strength five positionals uh he's got a weird basing system because they're monkeys they've got the little feet and the little feet land on the base themselves so he just goes flat on the base there and let's see can we get height wise Ooh, maybe a little bit he's about the same height as a black orc but definitely definitely way chunkier Okay, we've got some bits and bobs now, and this one was really interesting, and I have yet to figure out what it could be used for. This has got to be a star player in the Kickstarter, because I haven't seen the full preview yet. So what we've got is we've got a monkey pushing along a little track and tread thing with a big King Kong kind of dude on top with, with bananas. I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Literally none. Like... Please help me out. What can we use this guy as? Even if it's a team reroll. I don't know. Death roller? Potentially a death roller? Can we get dwarves out of this team? We might be able to get dwarves out of this team. Some kind of death roller or pump wagon would do wonders. Ah, pump wagon might work, actually. So we've got some star player-esque pieces now as well. This is really cool. I'm assuming this is what they called the banana tree. Uh, on account of it looking like a bit of a tree man. And it looks like it's got teeth made of bananas to kind of befit the jungle monkey theme here. And you've got one of those cute little dudes riding around in the back of it. Now, the cool thing about this whole Kickstarter deal is that you've got interchangeable pieces. So if you wanted to run the monkeys as wood elves, you've got these two treemen for you to choose. If you want to use the lemurs um, as your halfling team, you've got two treemen to choose from. You've got this treemen here as well, which is one of my favorite models. It doesn't massively fit with the monkey theme, and it's very small for a treemen, even for the game's worship ones. But it's such a cool design. So let's do the Black Orc test on these guys. As you can see, the tree has got more heft, but is a bit shorter than the Black Orc. But this guy here is massive. This this banana tree is just an absolute sweet miniature. It will go on a 40 mil, but as you can see, you can squeeze it on a 32, which is pretty useful. But look at it. That's awesome. Why would you not want to run that? But there are also a couple of sloths. So if you are planning on running a team with two trolls, for example, goblins with this set, we've got some secret weapons. We'll show those in a second. Or, you know, snotlings. You've got some sloths here who would make very good uh, trolls. And the sloth team kind of makes sense because, you know, really stupid. I can see them being a little bit sluggish, a little bit slower. But you've got so many different, like, models. See, there's the, the potential of this team is teams is just almost infinite. You can see there it's, again, uh, bigger than a black orc, but a little bit smaller, which befits the whole style, really. If you look at all the cutimals stuff, they are shorter and kind of rounder and more cartoony. So we've got one sloth there, and you've got another very angry sloth here. He's missing his hand. That's because it's in the box. But these, again, very cool models. Look at that. They've got the tree armor there. They've got spikes. They've got the faces are just superbly done. And again, that Greeblood just working magic. 
but this is something very special i love this so this is a contraption okay it could be used as a death roller if you're going to use this these guys as a dwarf team but I think it would be hard pressed to see this as anything other than a pump wagon. Okay, so three pieces here and uh, they are all labeled up beautifully. So that's P that's part B, this one's part A, and that just fits in there like that. I mean, look at this, I love this already. And we've got the other piece this side where the little dude is running on it. Uh, yeah, that goes about right. And there we have it. That is one of your pump wagons. So you've got a sloth here you can see underneath you've got the sloth hands you've got the sloth the rest of it they've tied it to a cart put wheels on it one of them's running around to push it they're both running around on the wheels to drive it forward this guy is steering it using his tongue <laughs> which is cool and you end up with a very unique and very cool pump wagon and again let's do the black orc size test and the goblin size test you can see that it's going to fit fine on a tabletop it's a bit bigger than the square is probably going to want to be but it's worth it for a model as outrageously fun as this one. Now, this is going to be one of the ones I base up to test paint like now because it's just so, so cool and so detailed. There is another model that I think is also a pump wagon, but I'm afraid I couldn't quite figure out how to build it. So we'll upend that as stylishly do behave. I've got like a pile of a pile of Grebo stuff on the left here. Um, I couldn't quite figure out how this went together. I cannot wait to see the Kickstarter page because I think, let's see, can I do this on camera? That goes there on the back of it. Okay, so it looks like we've got another pump wagon contraption here with the two uh, Lima driving around. And we've got these wheels and these guys here definitely kind of slide in there to be running around on it. They've got mounting points and they've got this little chassis point. I couldn't figure out how to build it, which means it's probably a pump wagon. You can see you got the pump wagon all built up and mounted on a 40 mil base size wise actually stays within its boundaries pretty well i'm very happy with the size let's get the old black orc test out chunkier than a black orc base wise obviously 40 versus 32 i don't think it's gonna zoom in as much as i want tap that there uh, you can see that actually it takes up a an appropriate amount of space as far as pump wagons go so I did manage to build the other pump wagon, which I'm super pleased with. Now, I haven't glued these little dudes in on the side. Basically, there's a couple of little tiny tabs, tiny notches uh, that allow you to mount this, the, the wheels to the outside. He's driving. Look at this. This is so good. Between these two pump wagons, this is just some of the most fun miniatures ever. Like, you could just take these and paint these and do whatever you want with these anyway. This is so cool. I'm really impressed with both of these guys. But these do have to be my favourite miniatures in the set, which is silly. They are the fun hoppers, basically. They're little lemurs flying around on tiny frogs. It's so good. I'm going to paint these up looking like Gizmo, I think, from uh, Gremlins. But these are just so much fun. So let's have a look at what models you want to use to build certain teams. So what we've got here is basically the Snotling layout. We've got the two pump wagons and, you know, what else do you need, really? But you can have two big-ish guys. So I've gone with two gorillas because I wanted to get them painted up, but the sloths would do a fantastic job and does tie into the fact that this guy is a sloth being ridden around as a pump wagon. So two of the pump wagons, two of the big guys or medium guys. Then you've got the two frog hopper guys to represent your fun hoppers. That works brilliantly. So... You've got a ton of the little lemurs here to be your snotlings. Now, the models are gorgeous. The little poses are a mixture of cute and hilarious, like this guy here, who I think needs to be represented, is just absolutely fat as you like, which is brilliant. He's had a big meal, and he's just in a wonderful place, so good on him. Now, we've got two bombardiers. Let's see if we can get this on camera. So this guy here has got a little spark on top. Let me uh, Let me get this actually on camera there we go little spark on top and he's got dynamite strapped all around him so you've got one bombardier there for the fungus flingers and here's the other bombardier lemur here with the bomb just 
riding around on it which is potentially a terrible idea but again really lovely models and the only thing missing from the snotling one would be two models to represent steel tees however if you take some of the uh, more active models like the angry ones like this i mean they've got little base lips but actually you could just mount them on tree stumps or something just to represent them being higher and they'll be very recognizable or you can use one of the other models like one of the chimps or something like that I'm really big fan of this. I'm very tempted to use this as a snotling team, but I've already got a snotling team. Oh, but the pump wagons. Now, if you want to run a goblin team, there are these cool pigs with special weapons. So, with special weapons. So this one here is a flying pig. What other Kickstarter comes with a flying pig? He's got rocket boosters attached to him, and he is just soaring through the air like that, which is cool. So you've got the Doom Diver. You've got a springy dude here. So these guys could be used to represent your stilty runners. Come on, camera, do focus. There we go. Uh, you've got a Springer here for the Pogo Pig, I guess is the best way to put it. You've got a cool Bombardier here, um, or could be used as the Black Goblin, to be fair. But he's got bombs and a knife, which I think represents him nicely. Uh, Bombardier, which is cool. And, of course, you've got to have the Chainsaw. And this is a wicked model. This is straight out of a very, very violent version of Angry Birds, and I am a massive fan of that. Now, this model here would make a wonderful fanatic, uh, just being pushed around and just going crazy. Again, not entirely sure what it's meant to represent, but the cool thing about these is when you've got like a load of positionals that are individual, as long as they're clearly labelled, you can use whatever. I think this would make a brilliant fanatic, just absolutely smash around the pitch. And then all you need is two big guys, whether you're going to be running the gorillas or the trees, or the sloths, it doesn't matter as long as you've got two big guys to represent your trolls. But this is where I think the flexibility of the Kickstarter really shines. We've got the chimps here, and they're grouped with uh, the style of headdress, helmet, and their kind of poses. So we've clearly got four catchers here, with these kind of, uh, I don't know, coconut kind of helmets you can see he's catching the ball you can see he's catching the ball you can see they've got the same helmet style you've got this guy who's absolutely laid out trying to catch a pass heroically and this one here which is brilliantly designed a great character there so you've got four catcher models now i really like these guys now where i'm thinking these could be the war dancers you can see they've got those the leaf kind of helmets they've got character they've got a lot of character however there are some models over here with this kind of triple leaf design that have also got a bit of character to them and that's the cool thing is they've got these groups of players and um, so i like these for the war dancers and i like these for throwers it makes sense because these characters uh, these models here uh, they've got balls so they are definitely lined up as throwers we've got two throwers you've got two to four blitzers and you've got four catchers there and a bunch of really entertaining the uh, sculpted linemen so you can build any team out of that. Okay, what's that? Four blitzers, four catchers, and some throwers. That's Amazons. That's Pro Elves. That's War Dancer Land. That's Wood Elves, you know? Um, you could even run Dark Elves if you wanted to go for this team. Okay, uh, the catchers are going to be up to no good, but you've got the runners here. You've got the Witch Elves. You've got some blitz. You've got a bunch of different things you can do, and as long as they're kind of color-coded or identified as different teams it's great so we've definitely got a wood elf team here this would also work for humans again for blitzers two throwers the catchers uh, you'd have to get a lemur or two to be a little halfling if you wanted to do it and if you're running wood elves or a team like humans you've got that tree in there as well to be your big guy for the lineup so you've kind of got the majority of teams here now um yeah wood elves pro elves basically for up to four blitzers up to four catchers, two throwers, and as long as you differentiate, you're good to go. And then, like I said earlier in the video, if you are fancying a Black Orc team, this works out real nice as well. Six gorillas and some kind of tree or one of the other, like, sloths or one of the, the other tree, just one of the big guys to represent your troll. You've got these gorillas here to represent your Black Orcs, and you've got a mixture of the chimps here to be those little goblins. Now, I love these. And that actually sizes up really well. The sad thing is that Grebo already have a really nice Blackhawk team. But the cool thing here is that it's so flexible. You know, the same models can also represent a an ogre team quite nicely with your ogres and your little dudes. Uh, you know, if you want to run a bunch of these guys and just the two trees, you've got halflings. There's a ton of flexibility. This model here, very creepy.
So when it comes to the quality of the models, I think you can see from the videos that the casting, the printing, whatever you want to call it, the Greeblood effect is fantastic. Now one thing to be aware of is on some of the models you're going to have this here, okay, which is basically the leftover parts of the supports where the model has been made. Now the proper thing to do would be to file it off wearing a mask. The quick thing to do is to just take a clipper and just pop it off just to flatten it down so that you can glue it on the base couple more size comparisons here so we've got the snotlings out of the box um so looking at the hopper size so we've got my snotling ah oh, the tiny titans what a team uh so size wise you can see actually they they're a little bit bigger than the snotlings which is why these models are really good to be able to represent uh strength one or strength two pieces so hopper wise lines up nicely the actual snotlings uh against the lemurs again a little bit smaller but way bigger way chunkier way fluffier but again, they've got that mass where actually if you needed to use them as a size 2, as a strength 2 piece, so if you were running them as a goblin in a black orc team, you could do that. However, when it comes to goblins and halflings, these guys, size-wise, are pretty good. So the chimps line up really nicely against goblins, um, and they also size up well against the halfling models too. But because of the style of them, they're okay to be strength 3. So if you want to run this as, like I said, Amazons or Wood Elves, you're going to have no problem at all. So there you have it. Another very cool Kickstarter from Kribo and a bunch of really sweet miniatures. The thing to take away from this is that they are very flexible. Okay, because the miniatures themselves can be so many things. Like, you know, you've got the gorillas. They can be ogres. They can be black orcs. They can do stuff like that. Because you've got the flexibility of that. And really, when you're playing Blood Bowl, it is a board game. So as long as you're kind of clearly marking what's what then your team can be represented by almost anything, yes, even Lego. But when it comes to the Grebo miniatures, every single one of them is really well sculpted and really well created, okay? Really well cast or printed, whatever you want to call it, with Greeblood. Um, there's a load of character in them, they're going to paint up really well, it's classic cutimals, okay? This is the first team that I think Tiff's ever seen and gone, oh my goodness, that is really great. So I've still really started painting because I couldn't resist already started painting just a bunch of them just because there's an interest there because they are cute the gorillas are funny the chimps are funny like there's a lot there for everybody it's not going to be to everyone's taste but hey if you've liked cutimals before you will probably like this set if you like the Grebo quality you will probably like this set and it's really flexible so i'm not sure exactly how they're going to organize the kickstarters just yet we'll probably do another video when that goes live but um, there will be something there for you. And the more you get, the basically the bigger options you get to run loads of different things. So I am thinking this will make a really fun Black Orc team. And we've got the Isle of Wight coming up in a couple of weeks. So I may be, uh, may be uh, having to paint these guys up ready for the tournament. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Please follow the links below. Follow Grebo. Find out what they're up to. And uh, yeah, keep an eye out for the Kickstarter. And we'll be back again soon with some more Blood Bowl content. Happy blocking.